Okay, in this video, I want to go over the steps to create a cinematic sequence so that a camera will travel along a path. First thing you can do is right-click in the grid viewport. Under function, select function spline mover. Now, if you look closely at this object, you'll see there's a red dot. That represents the origin of your path. And so this box geometry is really just a handle on that path. So you can move that box away from it if you want to. Now, with that box selected, inside the Entities tab, click on Curve, and in the drop-down, select Nerves. Click OK. And a key value was added. OK, so the three in this value for this property represents three points along the path. And the first point is represented by the first three values here of the vector that tells the point where it exists at in 3D space. So it's x, y, z respectively. x is 112, y is 96, and z is 80. This represents the red dot at the beginning of your spline path. Now with that aside, with the box selected, Click Edit, and three blue boxes appear, which represent those three points along the path. In the grid perspective, if I was to click on one of these, a blue square appears, which means that point is selected, and then I can move it around to manipulate my path. Now, currently I have a right angle and that's beneficial when I'm creating more points of interest to increase the length of my path or you just have a straight line. This is beneficial because when I add more lines, these lines, when I add more dots, these dots land directly on the intersection of the grid. So if I was to move this down some, like that, and then try to add some more dots, if I zoom in, you can see it's not directly on the intersection of the grid. Now, it's not critical that it lands on the intersection of the grid, but just so you know, that's how you can prevent it. So I'm going to select that last point and click on Delete go to this next point here which is directly on a grid line and we'll move it back up and usually what I do is just create several points and then some ways back in the middle I'll edit how I want the path to look and you can um, select one of these in your overhead perspective and then change to side perspective to edit the Z height of it. You can add more points in the middle of your path. With this one selected, if I click the insert button, I should expect a point to appear between here and here. So I'll click insert. Indeed, this is what I got. And sometimes you get strange results if you click insert at the end of the line. So it added one in front that time. And it's right on the intersection of the grid, so that was okay. You can delete points in the middle of your path to decrease complexity. And that makes a smoother path for your camera so it won't seem so abrupt when it makes turns. So that's something to keep in mind when you're creating your path. If I move this box, it moves the entire spline path. Again, it's just a handle. So you can move it away from that original origin point, which is this red dot. The next thing you're going to want to do is create two things. 
first under function select function mover and this is going to move your camera down the path now usually what I do is I have you want to have this origin point of this box and if I move this out of the way you can see it there it is right here so I normally put this occupying the same space as the other dot so it all lines up and then you can just move this box the same way that I moved the other uh, geometry box away from the point of origin and what I want to do is have this camera right in between these two boxes I guess uh, I mean there's a lot of ways you can do it I've been kind of making this up as I went previously I did this over here which is probably not better. It's just a solution. I had originally had equal size boxes occupying the same space. So I had to sh hold shift and alt and click multiple times to select different objects beneath my cursor to finally land on the one that I wanted to select. Doing this lets me just click on that object immediately. This may be superior to that or equally effective. I suppose I like this method better the more I think about it. So the next thing you want to do, this function mover, you probably want to give it a nice name. Let's uh, click on name here and down here we're just going to call it cam mover zero one whatever. Click enter to confirm it. One other thing you need to do, and this is imperative, you need to add a key value of cinematic with a value of one. And what this does is let it move when you're looking through the camera. Once your perspective is through the camera, anything that doesn't have cinematic with the value of one and you want it to move, it ain't gonna do nothing. So it's imperative. Anything that moves in your cinematic sequence while you're looking through the camera, it has to have this key value pair. Hopefully that's abundantly clear. Now then, I need a camera. So right click in the grid viewport under function, click on function camera view. And you can see an arrow protruding from it, which delineates its direction of perception and it's right down the path. That's what I want. So let's give it a name. I'm going to click on name here and we'll just call it camera 001. And you can call it whatever you want. So that's pretty much all you really need. Um, if you look at this camera, you can see the red dot right here I'm trying to make that occupy the exact same space as the point of origin on my spline path. So I'm going to delete all of that because I've already got all that made over here. And what you want to do now is have a look at the script. What you want to do inside your map folder is create a script file. It's pretty easy to do. Just uh, click new text document and you want to name it after your map. I call mine map lab. And you want to rename that to script and that'll turn it into a script file. Now inside this script file, this is what I've written. First of all, I got a variable called spline time. It equals 60 so it's going to take one minute to get from point A to point B after that I have a function called start camera 1 and inside the body of that function the first line 47 I'm telling the camera to bind to the camera mover and then after that the next three lines I'm telling how long it takes to travel down the spline path so I plugged in my variable here into this parameter. So it's time
9 to 60 seconds as delineated here. After that, I'm telling the camera mover that it's supposed to take five seconds from standstill to get up to full speed. After that, I'm telling it to take five seconds from full speed to come to a complete stop. After this, I'm activating the perspective of the camera. And on the next line, I'm telling the camera to start moving down the spline. The next line tells this uh, program to wait until it finally gets to point B. And once it does, then it runs this line, which tells it to give the perspective back to the player. And then this line tells the player to teleport to the end of the spline path. And back inside the editor, you can see at the end of the spline path, I've set this teleport object here. And this is what the player is going to teleport to. And there's an arrow coming out from it, which tells the player what direction to look in when he gets there. There's the arrow. That's kind of hard to see against a white background at any rate. So to create this object, what you want to do is right click in the grid viewport and under info, select player teleport. And that's how I created this. When I look at the properties here, I had to add the visual view camera one key value property there. Camera one is my camera. And this is just telling it to transition from the camera one perspective to my player perspective. I used its name here in my script to refer to this object. So that's what I have plugged in right here. Now next to that I have a plane that is a trigger once object which we'll call my script. If I look inside the entities tab you can see I have a call key here and its property is the name of my script function start camera one. If I look inside here you can see indeed that's the name of my function. When the player steps on this plane that's going to trigger my function and that will activate my camera until it's moved down the spline path. My perspective will warp away from player object, player start object, and immediately appear at the camera. Now, when this runs, you will see that this object right here, a spinning cube with a light attached to it, will not be spinning, whereas it is spinning before I go into the cinematic sequence. And the reason why it will not be spinning because when you look at the properties of this object, it does not have the cinematic property with the value of 1. Now, if I add it, when I enter my cinematic sequence, when I'm looking through the camera and it's moving, then it will be spinning. Otherwise, it will not. So, let's go ahead and test this out, prove it to ourselves. So I'm going to F2, F console, and I'm going to run the map. So I have a plane inside my green cube here, so I'll just step on it. I teleport to the camera, perspective wise. Player start does not move anywhere, it's still at the green cube. And if I didn't have a player teleport object, then once the sequence is over, my perspective would just go back to where the player was start was at. And so you can see that box was not spinning. Now, <clears throat> at the end of this sequence, the uh, A little prop there.
So yeah, at the end of the sequence, the perspective will be handed back to the player start and it is warped to the player teleport like that. So we're off. And then what else can I say? Over here at the blue box, I have another camera that whenever I step on it, I'm using a script to move another function mover, which a second camera is attached to. And let's have a look at that script. Right here. What I've got here is that second camera bound to a second function mover. I give it some properties telling it how long it's supposed to do what it does. And then I trigger that camera, which turns on my perspective from that camera. After that, I'm telling the camera where to go to, and it does it according to the amount of time that I told it it's supposed to take here. And I'm telling it to wait five seconds because all in all, that's how much it takes for it to move here. And then the next line, I'm telling it to rotate and then I'm telling it to wait for the camera to do that rotation on the next line. And then I pretty much just do that again for a different rotation. And then when that's done, I'm triggering the camera again to turn it off. And that returns my perspective to the player start. And this line is just telling, printing out a line to the console as proof that it actually ran through all of this code earlier. So let's go ahead and run that. So I'm going to step on a trigger here. I'm looking through the second camera. And now it rotates. At the end of this rotation, it does another one. And then at the end of this rotation, it yields my perspective back to the player. And so that's two different ways that you can move a camera around. This blind path is nice. There's a lot of control in scripting every movement triggered from the blue square. So, again, very quickly, just as proof evidence to ourself, if I select this box and I go inside the entity tab and I give this a cinematic key with a value of one, let's BSP that problem out. Select save and we select that. Let's run it. When I start this blind path, that object should still be spinning now because I added that key value pair. So I'm just going to wait for it to go up the incline, the wheelchair access and do you know how important that is. Do a little 180. There it is, it's spinning. It's critical to have that key value, cinematic value one. So hopefully that helps you out. And in afterthought, what I would like to do is create more concise videos to do specific things. Um, Maybe somebody can make a playlist of a lot of information about things you can do in Doom. Uh, Doom 3 World doesn't exist anymore except as an internet archive, and some of those pages are not accessible. So this is maybe a step in the direction of trying to create something similar to that. At any rate, that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed it.